Thank you for joining us online and on television. I am Suzette Thompson. I am presently at the Mikud playing field where the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be having a sod turning ceremony uh, for the upgrade of the Mikud playing field. The youngsters in the area have been waiting for such an event as this and are looking forward to today's proceedings. We have in the lineup of speakers persons like the Honorable Gail Rigabert and the Honorable Guy Joseph. As they are about to begin, uh, we are going to take you over into today's proceedings. awaited upgrade of the Miku playing field under the National Sports Development Program. No more cutting of the grass, no more getting the team in the mud on a rainy day for our sportsmen and women. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I call on Pastor Charles who will lead us in prayers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As we look to the Lord, let's all bow together. Our Father, we are indeed grateful to you that you've spared our lives and enabled us and gathered us here for this purpose. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for life. We thank you for provision. And God, today, as we gather together, it is for this occasion where our young people in particular, O oh Father, will find a place where they will be able to exert positive energy and in the process, God, carved for themselves a future. I pray, God, even as we together gather, I pray, God, that you will be the one in charge of this ceremony. Therefore, we invoke your presence with us today. Thank you for all those who've traveled from far distance to be here. We pray even at the point where they will return, you're going to take them back to their home safely. So I bring this ceremony before you and I pray God that everything will go well, that at the end, each one will be able to say, it was indeed good to be here. So we say thanks to you in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, please stand. <laughs> For the national anthem, which will be performed by a soloist of the St. Lucie's Steel Pan Orchestra. deserves a round of applause. You may be seated, thank you. Home is 
is where the heart is. As we all know, Nigu has produced many outstanding sportsmen and women, whether it be in cricket, football, track and field, or netball. With this being said, it is my pleasure to bring on Mr. Carol Henry, who is the president of the St. Lucia Cricket Association, to welcome everyone to this auspicious event. Thank you, Zina. I don't think the protocol that has been set by Zina. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you. I bid you a warm... <laughs> I bid you a warm and hearty good afternoon and welcome. Zina introduced me as the St. Lucia National Cricket Association President, but I'd like to add that I stand here also in another capacity, which is that I am a born and bred Kudia. So it gives me great pleasure to stand here this afternoon and welcome you all here on behalf of my fellow Nikudians, my district representative, Dr. Gail Rigobert, and her colleague and co-minister, Honorable Guy Joseph. The literature that was forwarded to me read somewhere in there that this activity or this project, which is the upgrade of the Miku playing field, will reach and match global standards. That gives me immense, profound pleasure to read and to hear. And when Dr. Riverbutt contacted me yesterday, I felt a keen sense of pride, pleasure, happiness, excitement, and just a lot of anticipation in terms of, okay, yes, we are having such, a, such an important um, transformation happening in Miku. And um, this being phase one, I guess say phase two will surely be bigger and stronger than phase one. So having said all of that, I don't want to keep you all too long. I wish to hand over to um, our master of ceremonies and say welcome and enjoy the rest of the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Henry, and let me take this opportunity on behalf of the people of Mekumo to congratulate you on your new position as president of the St. Lucia Cricket Association. You. If you followed her election campaign, you know that this project, among many other projects for Mekumo, is one that was very dear and close to our MP's heart. After many years of asking, while in opposition, we are here today as we prepare to receive a brand new sporting facility in Miku North. Although we are scheduled to receive the first phase of this project, which includes the playing field and the multi-purpose sports, she is still trying her utmost best for the pool to be done in this phase. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I invite to the podium the district representative for Miku North, the Honorable Dr. Gail T.C. Rigobert to address you. Thank you, Zina. Colleague Minister Honorable Guy Joseph, uh, Reverend Pastor Antoine Charles, Mr. Emil, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Youth and Sports, Mr. Mathre, Project Manager, Mr. Henry, thanks for your welcome remarks. President of the St. Lucia National Cricket Association and his colleague, enthusiast, and co-leader, Mr. Alcindor. Uh, esteemed invited guests, especially our development partners, um, CEO Williams, I see also managers, presidents, team captains, and other community leaders here with us this afternoon, members of the Royal Solution Police Force, and of course the media. Good afternoon to all of you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
Many of you will remember on a previous occasion that I wore a one plat. <laughs> and that would have been back in 2011 when I presented myself as your humble servant wanting to lead you to another plane where you'd experience not only personal but also collective growth, development and some level of intrinsic satisfaction. I pulled out that first photo and that very first constituency manifesto and you will realize it spoke of a 14 point plan for Miku North and I'm sure you can pull it up on social media or in your archives at home and curiously of the 14 points the first was develop and improve sporting facilities in Miku North today is a divinely ordained day albeit several la years later it is thanks to my colleague prime minister and uh, my cabinet colleagues that i can stand here and say we are delivering on a promise that was made way back in 2011 and i'm so profoundly grateful for that let us give all of us a round of applause We applaud ourselves for our tenacity. We applaud ourselves for our perseverance. We applaud ourselves for a community spirit that I dare say is unmatched anywhere in this island. We applaud ourselves because we know of the socio-political history of Miku North and we know of the struggles that we have when not in government to get what the people of this community deserve. We applaud ourselves that notwithstanding the vagaries of partisan politics, today as a community, we can all come together and celebrate a sword turning ceremony that will deliver to the young people what they more than deserve. I don't know whether you followed as closely as I did the number of tournaments want me to use this as well? That's the beauty of team. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Melvin has been with us from as way back as April 2011 when I expressed an interest in representing this community. He now works with the Miko North Parliamentary Office. We understand all too well the vagaries of parties and politics. And notwithstanding that, if you are like me, observing the performance of Miku North in football, at the district level, at the national level, Miku North stood tall. In cricket, you look around, you look at our pairs in Monipo in Lapwet. Magwe to Palais, and they too brought us pride, or at least reinforced our sense of pride as community people. Whether it be black heart football or veterans football, when Biku makes it to the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and the finals, even the organizers, the champions, say to you, when Miku North is not in it, it's not the same vibe. That's why we continue to ensure that we always make it to the last leg of the competition and on many occasions emerge victorious. Let's thank our sportsmen and women for that level of dedication. I recall very clearly the then president of the Miku Youth and Sports Council and a team when they came to my office as MP in our position asking that I host a netball competition because netball was a sport that had not received much attention in the community. And so started the GLTC Rigabut annual netball competition. 
The footballers said to me, how dare you have a netball competition and not football? I said, because I can't afford your prizes. Somehow it's easier to satisfy the ladies, I don't know. But guess what? Shortly thereafter, we also started the Gale TC Rigobert football competition. And you've seen the videos, you participated, you were spectators, you were players, you were captains, you were managers. I see all these people, sponsors also seated before me. And you know the level of interest that generated. But last year and earlier this year, when we brought the netball competition and the football competition to a close, I made one pronouncement. And that was simply that both these competitions would be suspended until we see the new Miku sporting facility. And here we are today for the sword turning ceremony. But there's something that I'm often reminded of, though I don't need that reminder because it is so dear to me. You'll recall shortly after the victorious events of 06-06-2016 when a victory rally was held to my left in the far corner. In fact, it took place on this entire field. It seemed like all of Sanusha was here. And I said, when we were as a team, newly elected, discussing where the victory rally should be held, it was without hesitation that I nominated the Miku playing field. And I said then, and I will say it again, the reason I did not hesitate, because having spent many days and many nights with my peers, I knew they shared in my passion and in my commitment to deliver to the people of Miku North a new playing facility. And so I was not terrified of the additional damage you were doing by dancing and jumping and praying in celebration on this site because I knew this day today would come. There's one thing that I always remind those I interact with. I remind them always. If I cannot do something, I say so. If it is long in coming, I say so. But when I also say that something is coming, it is because I am assured that it is coming. I recall the slight envy and jealousy that some of you whispered into my ear as you saw projects unfold in other places such as Soufre. And I said, worry not, ours is in the making. And today, I'm especially delighted, not only because we are going to experience very shortly the groundbreaking ceremony for the new sporting facility right here in Miku, but I share particular excitement with you because in another few weeks, we will have a similar activity to mark the sword turning ceremony of the long awaited Miku Wellness Center as well. And mark my word when I say to you, shortly thereafter too, as activity number three, we will be experiencing as well the sword turning ceremony for the new wing of the Miku Secondary School. We are ending 2019 on a high note and going into 2020 with the full knowledge and confidence that things are happening. I wish to thank the sporting fraternity for participating in the several consultations that we had. There were consultations that were held way back in 2011 when I held a joint meeting of the Miku and Monipo Youth and Sports Councils at the Monipo Community Center back in 2011. 
And that meeting sought to establish as a community that we appreciate and we understand that whereas we can boast of having over seven sporting facilities, the focus will be on the when playing field and on the Miku playing field in the main and of course the others will be maintained accordingly. I know there's a joke in Miku North. Na fe shime morso pa morso. Me si majwen hol shime si pa morso mwen fe. Jisa mwen fin shime ya. And the when playing field, the road leading to the when playing field was one such project. We must have done that road leading to the when playing field which we know in the community is the hub of the Monipo community. It's the hub for cricket, not only in Monipo and Mykonos, but also in St. Lucia. We must have done that in about three or four phases. But behold, <laughs> the whole road is now done. At this juncture, I must thank a very good corporate citizen of Miku North and the entity of the Miku Monipo Credit Union for pledging its financial commitment to developing that facility further as we seek to provide more comfortable fa facilities for patrons and sportsmen women alike. At that meeting in Monipo way back in 2011, we also determined that because of the location of this field, because of the volume of activity, because of access, that that would be the major playing facility. And I recall, I recall saying to the attendees, if it will cost us a dollar to fix each facility to bring it up to standard, and a dollar is all we have. We find ourselves putting 10 cents here, 5 cents there, 7 cents there, 6 cents over there. And no one facility is really being brought up to scratch. Whereas, strategically, we determined that we would develop this one for the benefit of the entire constituency and the when playing field in turn. And of course, the others, we would ensure that they are relatively comfortable for use, such as the Passius Plain Field and the Passius Plain Court. The court in particular, having been rehabilitated more recently, having assumed government in the last couple of years. So we remained true to that conversation we had back in 2011. Let me say further, that the development of sports in this community is not limited to the upgrading of physical facilities. We must do some capacity building, leadership training, management, other social and soft skills that will help build and strengthen clubs, ensure their sustainability, because you and I long for the days when hurricane and hot ice competed on this field and I see Mr. Evans in the audience and he would recall that with great fondness. We used to say when hurricane and hot ice were playing football here, if there was a fire in the village, God forbid, there would be no one in the village to out that fire. And I see Miss Butcher nodding in affirmation, remembering that as well. That is the culture of this community. There isn't a day, I'm sure, that the PS drives past, or Mr. Murphy, or Mr. Henry, or Mr. Allison Dorr would drive past, and there isn't something happening on this facility. So I know we are more than deserving, but deserving as we are, we must also learn to show appreciation and responsibility, to care for our public properties, our public spaces. I look to the right and I remember the struggle of building a change room facility while in opposition. Nous faisons tout mieux, pas tout mieux, pas tout mieux, juste nous finir. And I want to thank Massey Stores for providing ten to fifteen thousand dollars. I think it might have been at that time as well to help push us through to the finish line. To all the corporate citizens to whom we have had to turn to maintain our sporting enthusiasm 
hosting event after event. I want to thank you for your generosity. I want to thank the private sector nationally as well because every competition that has been hosted here under my patronage has received the, the generous sponsorship of many good corporate citizens and I wish to register my gratitude today on behalf of the people of Miku North. So I bring this one to a close for now, but I can hardly wait for the sword turning ceremony for the wellness center in a few weeks and the one to follow thereafter, the sword turning ceremony for the Mikun Secondary School third form block. Things are happening and I ask simply that you continue to persevere with me and we continue to support one another in prayer. Thank you. Thank you, MP. You may realize there's a slight change to your program. Welcome to Mikunov. Sometimes we do it just like our MP, we do it our way. Um, Mr. Emil is scheduled to address you, but he didn't come alone. He came with some goodies for you, but unfortunately, he got there before the goodies. They're on their way. I think they passed the bad link coming up, so we'll get them shortly. So at this time, without further ado, I would like to call on Honorable Guy Joseph as he addresses you this afternoon. A pleasant good afternoon to all. Good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to stand here today with my colleague Minister. I will adopt the protocol, but Minister, it's always a pleasure to be in Mikud, whether Mikud North or Mikud South. Yes, Pastor, other members, President of the Cricket Association. Today, we are here and I bring you special greetings from the government of St. Lucia. I stand here not just in my capacity as Minister for Economic Development, but also representing in part the Minister of Youth Development and Sports, and also the Prime Minister. I know that the Minister of Youth Development, I think he's out of state from what I gathered on official government business. The Prime Minister is very much engaged at this point in time in preparation for a number of projects that we have happening. But I am here in support of my colleague for the commitments made and the commitments that have been kept as a government. Coming into government, we promise a lot of things when we are in opposition, when we are hopeful politicians, always with the intention of being able to deliver what is promised. Circumstances change, situations may cause a different reaction, but there are some projects that must be delivered come what may. And I think this sporting facility in Mikud North is one such project. It is important because people pay lip service to the young people of the country to a great extent. And it is easy for politicians to come out and say, well, we are concerned about the youth. We want the youth to do well. But it is our actions that would describe. And when people tell me I'm doing things specifically for the youth, I say no. I say we are doing things for St. Lucia that will benefit the youth and everybody else. 
A sporting facility is something that should bring the family unit together. Not just the young people coming to play, but the younger ones who cannot play yet to watch on. The, the parents and grandparents to cheer them along. So when we make an investment of this nature as a government, I am sure the parliamentary rep would have dozens of projects to choose from because the reality is that we have limited resources. We have more being demanded of us than we have the capacity to give. And so you have to make tough choices. Like the parliamentary rep said, I do a lot of roads in my constituency in pieces. They say the longest journey begins with the first step. And if you begin, there is a clear indication that at some point it will be achieved. So this project is not a project in isolation. We are not just coming to develop a facility in Miku. This project is being developed in the context of a vision, a plan for the development of sports in St. Lucia. I think we have been on the periphery of sporting greats in the world. Of recent times, we've been able to have a captain of the West Indies team. We now have a captain of the under-19 team. We are expecting, and I have heard all of the discussions that are taking place with FIFA, to be able to have a Caribbean, maybe pro league, or, or some kind of league regionally for football. Because we believe that there's a lot to begin in sporting activities. And those of us who grew up a few years ago, not the younger ones, the older ones, remembered we played cricket with everything that was wrong. Stones. Those of you who remember the diaphin, we used to make the ball when you burn the diaphin. Rules, and sometimes we put a stone in it. So when, when you hit it, it wouldn't go anywhere. We played with oranges, with limes, with breadfruit, you name it. The reality is we are in a different environment and it's a different era. What we did, we cannot expect the youth of today at that same level. We have to create facilities that gives them the best opportunity to succeed. And that is the nature of this project. Now, the artificial turf has come under criticism. Yet still we are seeing all the first world countries that we want to emulate, all those we want to pattern ourselves after are moving in this direction. Yet some people who know better, for cheap political reasons, would try to convince us that this is not the way to go. But I am encouraged that the parliamentary rep for Mikud North is able to come here today for this groundbreaking ceremony. And this is not a groundbreaking ceremony that is not going to be followed by the appropriate action. Because it looks like the action has even begun before the ceremony is conducted. That is how serious they are about implementing this project. I was saying that this is in the context of an overall plan. There are no projects being undertaken in Castro Southeast yet, but I know Castro Southeastern will come because the vision of the government for the sporting fraternity in St. Lucia and the minister in particular who since our previous term in government always wanted to be the Minister for Youth Development and Sports. 
because as a national athlete himself, he wanted to make a contribution in this area. And he said, look here, for the size of St. Lucia, we need to have at least eight world-class sporting facilities spread throughout St. Lucia. So within a certain radius, you would have a major sporting facility. And so I congratulate the minister because of this project here in Mikud. Because Mikud remains the center of nerve activity within the constituency. And so, while the constituency appears to be Monripo on one side and Mikud on the other side, I realize that she's focusing on two sporting facilities. So that but the major world-class facility will be here in the village of Miku. And what a prime location, right along the highway. And so I am hoping that the contractors, in the person of C.O. Williams, will deliver a quick and efficient project of world-class standard because it is very visible everybody who passes will see so if you are lagging behind on the performance and delivery i can bet you we will get the calls because everybody is passing this way so you have a challenge to deliver this project in a timely manner i must join my voice with the parliamentary rep in applauding the young people the sports clubs groups and organizations because you have to sacrifice a period of time where you would not be able to use the facility in order to get the upgrade that is required. And we look forward to your full cooperation in this matter because I can tell you, the wait will be worth it. Because by the time this project is delivered, Mikud would have a facility that nothing can stop a sporting activity from taking place when it is scheduled. And so, we look forward to your cooperation. What is the plan of the government as far as all of this is concerned? This is not just a sporting facility. There's a sports program coming with the facility that is going to encourage the professional development of the various sporting disciplines. We have opened, under the purview of the minister again, the sports academy at the Grosile Secondary School. I know that the Azure Secondary School is aimed to become a special school focused on the arts. Because what we believe today it is not just the academics that we should be focused on, while that is important, but the various areas of talent development must be harnessed adequately. And I am proud of the parliamentary rep and the Minister of Education. When I attended the graduation ceremony at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, and I saw the plans, the unveiling of the new logo for the school. And that very soon, Sir Afa will become a university college under the leadership of the present Minister of Education and Parliamentary Rep for Mikud North. It clearly tells me that the vision plan of this government is falling into place and the investments are being made into the right areas so that St. Lucia can be well poised to be the country that all of us can be proud of and we can attain the highest level of achievement in this country. Right. And so, Minister, I applaud you because that is the investment that is being made in the youth. And then followed by all of this is the overall development plan of the South. And I know the Prime Minister would not forgive me if I did not touch on this. Because the plan for the South is that we would stop the migration of everybody having to move up north.
to get a job but that with the, our people we've lost in the south to the lifestyle in the north that we are going to bring that same lifestyle and even better to the south that we can reposition the population in the manner that it ought to be and i throw out a challenge to you to believe that in the next five to ten years Viewfort will rival Rodney Bay. Yes. Yes. You see this trip from Mikud going down back to Shozel? I believe that we can match what is happening in Rodney Bay any day with what will happen in the south. And that is why spotting facilities like this, then you have the horse racing track, you have the new university that is going to start down in the south. And then you have the horse racing track, which many critics have tried. I heard they said the horses are dying. That's not true. <laughs> we know that's not true. Horse racing has been something that has always fascinated St. Lucians over the years. As a little child, I went to Trim's Riding Stables in Kazaba. And those of you who are older than me and from the south, you know when there used to be horse race by the Kakabet in, in, in that area. So, when you look at what is happening in the south of the island, and I know, I was told the equipment is there, the contracts have been signed, and the hotel is starting there also. So can you imagine a hotel that will employ three or four hundred young people and other persons from the south of the island. With the employment that's happening at Ojo Labs, and already there's a new call center coming into the south. The new cruise port facility, the new airport, and the new St. Jude's Hospital that will all be delivered. It tells me that Mikud will no longer be considered just an agricultural based community and so you have to understand where does this facility fit in all what is happening because the more people you would have residing in this area the more recreational facilities that you would need in order to accommodate them so i call on you to believe in the plan that is being delivered and in all of this, we have not increased the debt of the country. And you would see in this upcoming budget, the numbers may be going down as far as debt to GDP rather than going up. Because there is a clear development plan. So how are we financing this project? We have to say special thanks to the Taiwanese government because through the initiative, of the constituency development program so don't put too much pressure on your parliamentary rep because she's not no longer getting her full allocation for cdp project because part of the allocation goes to pay for facilities of that nature <coughs> because the footpaths are important the foot bridges are important the walkways and the roads but there must be a balance to development I am proud to stand here and say that for every single Monday, I got a call, I got a nudge, I got a question from your parliamentary representative, especially in relation to the Mikud Wellness Center. And I've been around for a few years. That project was stopped since when Sir John became the parliamentary rep back in 2006. Look at how many years of struggle. Finally, after lots of debates and discussions, the contract, and, and for those who say we don't tend the project, I want to tell them that 216 contracts have gone out from my ministry since I came into government, and every single one of them went through the tender process every single one because these are world bank cdb eu 
all of these projects must go through the tender process. So the center, the wellness center, or people better understand it as the Mikud Health Center. I want you to understand. Sometimes people associate the wellness with the mental um, side of it. The name change is, but it is really the Mikud Health Center, which went out to tender. The tenders came back, they were evaluated. The contract has been issued, and the, the contractor has assured me that he will start site clearing before the end of the year, so we can go in there, do the groundbreaking, so that within the next year, you would have the Mikud Wellness Center or Health Center completed. As I speak to you today, you would recall what had happened to your school, the need for the expansion. We were able to raise the money for one block to be added to the Mikud Secondary School. It has gone out, the tenders went out, it came back. Before I came here, they were doing the evaluations and we have requested a special meeting of the Central Tenders Board so that this contract can be issued before the end of 2019. So that very early in the new year is groundbreaking. So we have three groundbreaking ceremonies, this one today and two others that I am directly responsible for, along with your parliamentary representative, to see to it that we deliver. Now, that is not politics. That is about a vision for St. Lucia and a development that is going to take us to the next level. I can spend the whole evening talking about projects. I love what we are doing, but I don't want to overextend my, my welcome here and, and bore you with a long speech. But I want to assure you that things have been working out. The last thing I will say to you, when I saw the numbers, when we came into government, unemployment was at 25%. We are down to in the region of 17.5 to 18% unemployment as I speak to you. And that is without any of our major projects. Youth unemployment was at 44%. It is down 10%. It is now at 34%. So can you imagine by the time the airport project begins and all of this construction, and I need to say to C.O. Williams' group of companies, we want some of the people in Nikud not to just be enjoying the facility, but to enjoy some of the work in the facility so that they can help themselves and their family to have a bright and merry Christmas. So we want, we want to know that there is engagement, that the young men in the community, the ladies, the skilled people are engaged in some form or another so that they, the value that they would place on the project is not just that they are playing here, but that they can see, I help build this in my community and there will be greater appreciation so i thank all of you i thank god that we can have we could have accomplished that much thus far remember three and a half years in government and we are able to deliver on a lot of promises follow what will happen in parliament on tuesday and rest assured you will see more benefits from what we are doing and so, to the PS of sports, I congratulate your department for seeing to it that the program we spoke about is being implemented. And I look forward to moving from Mikud to the next community where another major project is going to happen. And I look forward to you getting your swimming pool during this phase of the project in Milford. I thank you and God bless. I thank you all of you guys for that. And I think with the persistence and dedication of our MP, with PS, get ready to fill the draft of that swimming pool being done in phase one.
At this point, I would like you to, to sit back and enjoy some beautiful sweet steel pan from a soloist of the St. Lucie Steel Pan Orchestra. some goodies but he reached before his goodies his goodies has finally arrived sometimes we we mr emil will present you with an overview of the project sometimes we listen and we hear we're going to get but sometimes when it's visual when you see it you understand what it is that you're getting so i wanted this to be here before mr emil presents you so you could actually see what it is that he's talking about that we are going to get here in mikuno without further ado the permanent secretary in the ministry of youth development and sports mr emil Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're in a season of heaven, so I feel like Santa Claus now. <laughs> um, permit me to adopt the, the protocol already established. And, wow, two very powerful presentations by our honorable minister. Although I did not expect you know, such an enthusiastic one from honorable Dr. Gill, because I remember when I met her for the first time introducing this project, her words were, I am not interested in short turning ceremony. I am a ribbon cutting lady. <laughs> but I rather suspect, you know, that was said in pessimism that the project would not be delivered on time. But I need to recognize Mr. Stephen. Let me get the name right. Stephen Bringus, 
for delivering or commencing on time. Sorry for all the pressure that you know has been put on you to deliver and, and to commence on time. But you were so much on time that you got here before the rendering. <laughs> so it's, I suspect now I have to put pressure on my communication team to get those renderings here on time. Uh, uh, let me first start by making an apology for the minister. And I think, you know, Honorable Guy just have made, you know, more or less delivered what he really wanted to say here this afternoon. I suspect he's been in the airs or been pressure, pressure in the cabinet, you know, to ensure that our sporting infrastructure is attended to and brought high up on the list of priorities. Everything that you have delivered and said, you know, about sports and youth development, it's exactly what, you know, Honorable Edmund Estefan, who is the Minister of Youth Development and Sports, is passionate about and in government to deliver. But let me take you, you know, in my presentation on a journey that to what led us, you know, to this subterranean ceremony. Although Honorable Gail has presented a number of journeys in terms of what God has to, to be here. But I will look at it from the project perspective. Um, the government of St. Lucia recognizing the importance of sports in the development of youth, initiated a national sports strategy in 2017. When the Parker Company was engaged to develop a master plan for the upgrade and redevelopment of sporting facilities of the sporting facilities inventory and infrastructure on the island. In the months that followed, the Parker Company, in conjunction with the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, conducted a sports infrastructure needs assessment, visiting more than 150 facilities in every constituency on the island, and engaging national associations of respective sporting disciplines, holding community consultations with constituency councils and youth and sports councils, and held consultations with other government agencies and stakeholder groups. In 2018, the Parker Company's report, coming out of the, out of the assessment, gave birth to the National Sports Infrastructures Program which has been spoken of, you know, quite eloquently by Honorable Guy Joseph. The, pa the Parker re report identified 40 sp sports facilities around the island to be rehabilitated, developed and maintained by the government of St. Lucia. These facilities will provide St. Lucia with a stock of sporting infrastructure to be utilized in running our local competitions, development programs, and sports recreation activities. They will enhance St. Lucia's capacity in hosting regional sporting events and competitions, and increase our chances of hosting international events and competitions as well. Of the 40 facilities recommended to be developed, Nine have been categorized by the government as study ready projects, meaning design concepts have been drawn and require further research, consultation, and development in order to implement in the medium and long term. Five facilities, however, have been defined as shovel ready, meaning that the detailed designs have been developed and are presently being built, or construction will commence in the current financial year. The shovel ready projects, if I can touch on them briefly before I get to Mikul, the Sufra Mini Stadium, and that is ongoing. The scope of work entails a 400 meter track that is IAAF certified, an artificial football turf that is 
CONCACAF and FIFA certified. And other amenities like the grandstand. The other such project which is ongoing is the St. Lucia Sports Academy, which opened its doors earlier this year to start the holistic development of our secondary aids promising athletes. Work on the, works on the sports infrastructure are, set, are still ongoing and projected to be substantially complete by the end of the year. Miku South, which is your neighboring constituency, works have commenced on installing a similar artificial turf like what you're going to receive, but of a smaller size. And that will enable them, you know, to organize, you know, and effectively run their local programs and competitions. We could know, on the other hand, as the renderings, you know, so illustrates, you know, it's down for no better upgrade than, than, than Miku, Miku, Miku South in itself. And I will go about describing you know, what is displayed on the re renderings in a little bit. Um, last but not least, for this phase of the project, is Denry South Sports Complex, where works are expected to commence in the last quarter of this financial year and completed four months thereafter. So again, Mr. Brinkus, I'm holding you to that four months to complete the dinner. <laughs> and in Mikunov, can I move? I think it's better if I move across and, and try to explain what is, what is being presented here. So everybody's attention should be drawn to this side. This is your artificial football first turf, measuring 62 by 92 meters. As was mentioned, you know it is suitable for hosting, you know, regional CONCACAF tournaments. And adjacent to this artificial turf will be portable seating facilities to facilitate at least 500 spectators. This is what the first phase of this project will deliver. As we move on, we have the two courts being, your court being rehabilitated and another court erected. And that will be surfaced with some synthetic turf that is pre-marked. So there is no need to mark the court, you know, as the marking deteriorates. And again, a portable sitting accommodation, placement for portable sitting accommodation, you know, will be erected. Here, which is the most talked about, swimming pool. Though it is not in this phase, the designs are currently at an advanced stage. And there is a strong commitment from the Prime Minister to get it delivered in the next financial year. So we're looking at by the second quarter of the next financial year, you know, for this swimming pool to be erected. You may be asking why a, why a swimming pool, given that your beach is right next door. Yeah, but the, the, the swimming pool in itself, you know, holds a lot of benefits for sports. Both in terms of, well, sports and swimming is a life skill in itself. And given that you, you're from the east, near the Atlantic Ocean, it's important that you know most, if not every young person, learns to swim. It's a life skill. Added, swimming is a sport that is evolving. And where St. Lucia has been putting in, you know, some wonderful performances. And there is a need to decentralize the sport and take it, you know, to the other communities. Because if you can swim, you know, against the currents of the Atlantic Ocean, I know that you can do better than what is happening in the north. I'm from the east as well. <laughs> also to, you know, the swimming pool can be used, you know, to build up 
or develop training programs for the other land-based sporting disciplines. In that swimming teaches you, well, it gives you, you know, balance, it provides you with good strength, and also it can be used as a means of rehabilitation, you know, from injuries. You know, when, when you have gotten those injuries in those land-based sports like football and cricket and so on. And this facility can be used, you know, for exercise as well, especially for our, our elderly, you know, where jogging becomes difficult, you know, and, and those high-impact sports become very difficult. If you're in the swimming pool, you know, it is less strain on your joints and it can facilitate, you know, a lot more comfortable exercise. So that is the reason why this swimming pool is one of the first being erected outside of the north. The plan is to have one erected in the, in the, on the western side of the island, which is Sufre, and for us to have a 50 meter aquatic center in the north of the island to facilitate us hosting regional and international swimming events. Um, this is what has been planned. As I said, this is the area of focus for now. This uh, and, and the courts, this will come in the second phase. But what, what, what the space provides is for other amenities to be added. Now, this is not part of you know, the National Sports Info Infrastructure Program, but it is being placed here so we can begin to realize that we can utilize the spaces you know, for other sports and recreational activities. You know, even for our younger, younger, um, our kindergarten, you know, people and so on. So in essence, this is what has been delivered. This is already in place. The parking lot will be rehabilitated, you know, and level to, to accommodate, you know, good parking for when you host it events. So in essence, this is, you know, what the program, what the plan is for this complex, which is, Nikonov. But I need to. But I need to touch further on other issues mentioned by the, your parliamentary representative in terms of, you know, having sports management and you know councils and clubs organized, you know, to benefit from from this facility. So let me go to this pan. Just so add, the community of Mink would need to recognize the importance of this sports complex in the holistic development of the people, especially our youth and in so doing, take ownership of this facility. So it is not a facility of the government. After it is built, it becomes a facility of Miku North. And every resident of Miku North should take pride in it and have a sense of ownership of it. As a ministry responsible for youth development and sports, we'll be working with the youth and sports organizations in the community to ensure that the relevant systems are in place and the youth and sports organizations emanating from these communities are vibrant. If you have this facility, it is necessary that you, you know, make full use of it and for that to happen, your councils, your sporting organizations need to be vibrant and working you know, and ensuring that there is constructive activity happening, you know, on, at these facilities. We'll be working with you and the respective national associations to ensure that the development programs are in place and complemented with this facility creates, creating an environment for increased participation in sports and that is the main emphasis of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports to ensure that Every young person, in some way or another, 
is participating in sports and active recreation. recreation. And also to fulfill the true potential of all, the true sporting potential of all of, all of our youth. So as we increase, you know, the base of performance, what we're hoping is that, you know, more athletes will be recognized and emerge to become elite athletes and national representatives, you know, of St. Lucia. We'll also, in, we'll also be working with the respective sporting associations to ensure that sporting events and competitions you host are at the highest standard, first creating an atmosphere where our athletes can display their acquired skills and tactics to a healthy and appreciative audience. So as, as our athletes, you know, honor skills and become more tactical, we want to ensure that the level of competition and events are organized in such a way that you have spectators actually appreciating, you know, the hard work of those athletes. And that is the only way sports will grow. That is the only way sports will develop in St. Lucia. This is our vision and ambition for sports development in Nico North. As a, as, a, as a ministry, as was rightfully mentioned, it is okay to put up the sporting infrastructure, the sporting infrastructure, but if it is not utilized well, if the programs are not in place, if the competitions and events are not at the highest standard, we will not reap you know, a return on this substantial investment that the government of St. Lucia is making in our young persons and in our sports people. So as a ministry, we present this vision and ambition to you, and we hope that you join us in realizing it and making sports and youth in St. Lucia prosper. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emil. At this point, I would like to call on our district representative, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, and Honorable Guy Joseph, as we officially break the ground on the Miku playing field. <laughs> Thank you. So we have now officially given our ground to Mr. C.O. Williams for the next four months. <laughs> Wonderful. Or less. Or less. Great. Even better. We have come to the end of this evening proceedings. At this time, I would like to call on Miss Melisha Hippolyte as she does the vote of thanks. Let me begin by saying it's an honor to stand here before you delivering the vote of thanks on this day, the 3rd of December 2019. A day that will go down in history. Yes. A day that the young men and the veterans of Nikud North will never forget. Amen. With this being said, I would like to say thank you to our parliamentary representative, Dr. Gail Rigobert, 
for her hard work and committed dedication by putting her people first. Yes. Dr. Rigobert, thanks for advocating with purpose. Thanks to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports for selecting Nikud North as one of the communities for, for the facilities upgrade. Thanks to the sportsmen and women of our community for their continued patience. We were promised that the wait would have been worthwhile. And here we are, the beginning of bright and gloomy things to come. Thanks to the government of St. Lucia for investing time, money, and energy in Nikud North. Managers, coaches, minister, ministry officials, contractor, media personnel, sound technician, staff of the Nikud North constituency office, invited guests, all gathered here this day, I say thank you. To the Divine Master who carries our master plan, he has graced us with fair weather today. He go before us always, to him we say thank you. And season greetings from the Mikud North Constituency Office and our Parliamentary Representative, Dr. Gail Rigobert. I thank you. Well said, wonderful Mr. Bully. This takes us to the end of our proceedings this evening. Let me once again thank everyone for coming out and lending support to our parliamentary representative and to their constituency. The next time we meet here is to give us our field. Thank you.
as we are about to close the sod turning ceremony at the at the Mikud playing field today we have heard of the developments in the community of Mikud they just had their sod turning ceremony soon they will be having the groundbreaking for another wing of the Mikud comprehensive the Mikud secondary school also the health center they are looking at that as well and all these ceremonies will be held soon so great things are happening in the community of Mikud under the leadership of Honorable Gail Rigabert So as we look at the projecting graphics, we are looking at the new facility which is to be opened soon. It is presently under construction. We are looking at a football field, a state-of-the-art football field, also a state-of-the-art basketball court and even a swimming pool there is also going to be a recreational park for the little ones as well there also will be a wonderful parking facility for persons who will be visiting this wonderful this wonderful project that is set for Mikud North persons seem to be very exciting excited about what is happening here tonight everybody is gathering in one accord to welcome the project that is on the way at this time Great things are happening in the community of Mikud. All seems to be excited about the new facility, sporting facility, which is about to be materialized in the community of Mikud.
All right, so I have the Honorable T.C. Gail Rigobert with me. Honorable Minister, um, this is a great accomplishment for you. I can see you're all smiles, you're excited. Um, you have um, come true on a promise to the people of Mikud. How do, tell, tell us, how does this make you feel at this point? I know that when I met with persons from the community back in 2011 at the Monipo Community Center, they must have thought I was campaigning and it was political talk. I know that on the very day we did the groundbreaking ceremony for the Agriculture Feeder Road in Maho, that was shortly after we won the election, and we had a site to visit right here on this spot for today's event i know the sportsmen who accompanied me accompanied me on that day might have thought oh another consultation i know when i invited them to the meetings in castries members of the uh, youth and sports council from miku when i invited the miku north constituency chairperson when they attended those meetings they were wondering are they wasting their time when I spoke with the head of the league, right, I was oh, is this really going to happen? We had a consultation again in October at the Mikut Secondary School. And even on Sunday evening when we had another consultation, people were not convinced. And uh, here we are. And uh, you will recall that the PS said I had insisted that I do not want a sword sitting ceremony. I want a ribbon cutting ceremony. <laughs> because a ribbon cutting ceremony signifies completion That's right. but uh, the contractors have a very good track record and i know we will finish on schedule i want to thank the sportsmen who went for their patience and beg their further tolerance as we suffer a little inconvenience for the next few months as we deliver, deliver on the first phase of this project Thank you so much. Um, one more thing. Um, there were other projects that was mentioned during the ceremony. Um, how soon will this ceremony be held? I understand that with respect to the Miku Health Center, the Miku Wellness Center, that the bidding process has been completed, a contractor has been chosen, and we expect work to begin before the end of the calendar year. With respect to the Miku Secondary School, um, the anticipation is that at least the, the bidding process will be completed and I expect that ground will break, if not by the end of this year, certainly before the end of the first quarter next year. Wow. So there you have it. Great things are happening in the community of Mikud under the leadership of Honorable Gail Rigobert. Thank you so much, Honorable thank Minister. Thank you for the coverage. I know that you do this for many of our activities. I wish to thank you and your team to, to thank um, Vitus and, and you for the kind of coverage you receive. And I look forward to seeing you at the other groundbreaking ceremonies. Thank you so much. Thank you too, and you're most welcome. <laughs> All right, so that takes us to the end of our live broadcast. Thank you for joining us. I am Mrs. Suzette Thompson, standing by the Honorable Gail Rigobert. Thank you. Thank you.